Middle East play. It kind of just got it, it just kind of got shunned over because everybody started talking about you know impeachment, and then Iowa, and then I haven't even given you my full ah, gosh my full opinions on Iowa. But retired Marine Corps Colonel John Somerville will be in uh, the third hour to talk about the Middle East peace plan, and then very special guests after that. The third hour we're going to be talking. We're going to be talking to uh, Gil Molina, the executive director of Cal, and then Anthony Raimundo. Uh, he's suing the UFW, the United Farm Workers uh, Union, so we're going to be uh, talking to him right after that. But uh, without further ado, I want to get to uh, my guest in studio right now. You, you know what? You're, you're a little taller than uh, <laughs> I, I'm looking at here. I'm looking, I'm oh, looking yeah. at the, the mic placement. Pretty and, big uh, guy. <laughs> uh, Nicholas, uh, Nicholas Wildstar, he is a candidate for the mayor. Uh, for the city of Fresno, running for uh, mayor right here in the city of Fresno, yes. and I, we got so much to talk about. We we, we have one segment, and I I, I highly doubt we're going to get it all in there. I but know. it's hard when you're in radio. Isn't it, it, it? it really is. But <laughs> a lot of people, I, I want to know what you know. Introduce yourself to Fresno because a lot of people might not know you. I mean, I I didn't know you until someone had reached out and said, "Hey, you want to get you want to get Nicholas uh, Wildstar Wonderful. in in the studio well, and talk to him." But, well, thank you for Give your elevator me first. Elevator pitch. All right. Well, <laughs> well I'm pleasure. Nicholas Wildstar. <laughs> I'm a long-time civil rights activist. Um, I have a very popular YouTube channel with over five million views. With me fighting police and judges. But like, uh, so, wait, hold up. Like physically? Uh, no. Okay. I mean, like, <laughs> I mean, like you know, fighting them in court. Uh, oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. So um, basically, I do my best to again fight the criminal justice system firsthand. You know, like most people, if yeah. you have a traffic ticket, you have to go to court to deal with it, you know? I just happen to be one of those people that protest during yeah. that whole episode. If you get pulled over by the cops, you know, I'm protesting the entire time. So uh, I've been, again, a civil rights activist for the past uh, over a decade now. Yeah, and, um, and actually moved to California to pursue a career in music from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So okay. being here in Fresno is very much like home to me. You know, really? It, well, it doesn't, snow, it doesn't <laughs> snow here. It does, certain parts, you know, <laughs> especially over, you know, the past month or so. Uh, uh, so, yeah, cold. yeah, you have some snowball fights coming off the 99, so <laughs> uh, it definitely will happen. But uh, I'm used to the farmland and, you know, the more southern hospitality, so yeah. to speak, people being more communal and friendly. Uh, where in Southern California that seems to be a bit uh, absent, uh, yeah, that's okay. where my wife and I actually moved here from back in June. So, um, yeah, and uh, actually, um, I ran for governor of California twice. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I ran once in 2014 as an independent, and then uh, last year I was the endorsed candidate by the Libertarian Party for governor. Uh, so, unfortunately, I was highly ignored by the media since they, you know, don't tend to care about their party candidates. Yeah, but, no kidding. Um, thankfully, I was able to... Uh, make my rounds statewide and a few of those stops were here in Fresno and my wife and I we really love the city and the people here are much friendlier <laughs> and so that's how you fell in love with Fresno is why yes. you campaign from oh exactly so we so, moved here so the mayoral ship for the city of Fresno mm -hmm. is is a nonpartisan race right yes it is however we all know in these highly partisan times you know we kind of know where where everyone stands yeah. so you would be the what candidate? <laughs> I would be the anti-government candidate. <laughs> anti-government anti candidate. anti-government okay. politician, believe it or not. <laughs> uh, so libertarian. I, very much so, extremely. I, I, I still can't help but be uh, an advocate of libertarianism, yeah. you know? And that is minimizing government and expanding the freedoms and liberties of we the people. You know, we seem to see those being robbed every day here in this country. And, you know, the... Uh, decimation of the um, Constitution. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> we see that often with yeah. our elected representatives. And it's sad because, again, they're sworn to uphold that oath to protect and respect those words um, written in the United States Constitution. But yet, we don't see that. And so the relationship has eroded. We no longer trust our representatives. So it's best for us, we the people, to take over that system ourselves. So we're going to get rid of government then if you're in there? You're just, <laughs> yes. Limit well, we're going to limit it oh, as okay. much as possible. <laughs> so, you know? Well, that's the thing is look at what government does. It yeah. pretty much is a dictator to everything that we want to do and 
you know, experience in life, whether it be marijuana or, you know, um, prostitution or, you know, uh, driving a car or owning a gun or traveling from one place to another, you know. Government dictates everything, our health choices, our educational choices, our sexual preferences, you know, they dictate every facet and, and it shouldn't be that way. Um, the Constitution wasn't constructed that way. The forefathers of this country definitely did not want government to be the overseers yeah. of our day-to-day -day lives. So. I gotta hang out with more libertarians. Yeah, I absolutely. know what you guys stand for, but I don't have, I don't think I have, I have one libertarian friend. All right. I don't cool. know if he thinks I'm a friend anymore. He's playing <laughs> Olivia. He, he used to be on the city council. All right. Uh, anyhow, so local, I mean, you're running for mayor for the city of Fresno, uh, Nicholas Wildstar yeah. in studio. And, you know, local politics is, you know, you got, you know, you got your essential city services. You got police, you know, you have garbage, you got potholes. Yes. What, where do you feel that you could limit government in the city of Fresno? Well, starting first with the city officials, we have over 800 city officials, nearly 900, I believe it's about 840, 840 city officials. That get not paid, county police, right? Not county police. Um, they get paid over a six-figure salary. They get paid over $100,000 a year. Um, we have thousands of city officials here. Uh, the police department itself, even though they've been given two, $20 million in the budget, um, turned around and said, you know, the police chief Andy Hall turned around and said, we need new guns for the guns that we have already. So now that's an extra $200,000, quarter million dollars being taken away from taxpayers just to, again, what, satiate their appetite to have what, the best weaponry? And if it's good enough to keep our neighborhood safe, then there isn't any reason why we should be weaponizing and militarizing our police. Um, Hold on, so, so, so they, they wanted, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, but he wanted new guns because the ones that he had were, you know, they're, they're, they're having some problems. They've been, they've been patched, patched and you don't think that they were having problems? Not at all. If anything, like I said, I just think it's a desire to have the newest toys. I mean, come on. We know. That's so would you thing. totally get rid of guns? For the police <laughs> no, department? not at all. I want to make sure that they are well outfitted, but I also want to make sure that they're well trained. Um, the one thing that we see here in the city is, you know, uh, abuse of authority by our law enforcement officials. And for instance, with the shooting of 16 year old Isaiah Marietta Golding, he was shot in the back of the head by a Fresno PD officer while the kid was running. You know, that's one shot in the back of the head. So that cop is either well-trained to either shoot to kill or B, needs to go get training on how to deal with people of the community and not use mm -hmm. excessive force, especially one to where it's fatal. It could have simply maimed the guy, you know? So um, more training for our officers to use their weapons. A lot of them have outdated training, you know? They're advocating for making Fresno a um, constitutional carry city. So okay. <laughs> All right. we can reduce the amount of weapons violations, arrests that we have, a, you know, possession of weapons, etc. Because um, you do have the constitutional right to protect yourself, you know. Um, so that should be respected by our law enforcement. And it, again, wouldn't reduce those uh, amount of incidents where people of color are getting shot and killed by police because they think they have a gun. Um, so... I definitely think, again, more training in those areas, as well as take, since now that we're going to be giving people of the community an opportunity to be in possession of a weapon, uh, training for them on how to use it. And if we give police an opportunity to, again, provide that training to the people of the community, now you're rebuilding that trust. Hmm. Now they know these are the same people that are here to protect us, and now the police know those people that are armed, you know, are also going to protect themselves as, as well as other members of the community. And that's what we want, just the working together, because I'm not anti-police, I'm more so anti-control. Um, I'm anti-disrespect. Um, and a lot of black and brown people, that's what we tend to experience when dealing do, do, with law enforcement. Do you, Nicholas Wildstar uh, in studio is running for the uh, mayorship of the city of Fresno. Do, how, how would you rate the police department? Because, I, you know, there's I've seen I've seen I've seen stories and statistics where, you know, we're not we're not Ferguson and we're not oh, some yeah. of the, we're not some of these other cities that, are, that have yeah. really we're not LAPD. Yeah, you know? <laughs> we're not. You know, we're not. So or, how, or Sacramento PD. Or, yeah, no, no, that is true. But uh, how yeah. how bad is it? I mean, is it? I would give it about a three point five. 
Based on, <clears throat> excuse me, a 3.5 out of 5. I stand at 3.5 like an Expedia. Also, you know, okay. I, I will. Yeah, I'd, I'd give it that because as a black man, come on, being honest here, I'm driving around the city and I'm not really getting harassed by cops, you yeah. know, and I could be. And I'm a brown so, man and I'm not getting exactly, stopped by cops you either. Know? But in Orange County where I was, it happened repeatedly yeah. over and over and over again. And even though some of those people even knew me, the, you know, police um, supervisor, you know, would come out and he'd say, hey, wild star, you know, I'll do it by day. It, yeah. it, it was crazy, but... Um, yeah, I would definitely rate them higher on the scale of not being as discriminatory. And that's actually one of the things that attracted my wife and I to the city also is the people of Fresno. Um, they're less snooty. as yeah, you we, know, are, yeah, we, uh, we, we are less snooty. Right? <laughs> you know, and less prejudiced than those that we've experienced in Orange County where we moved from. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it is refreshing being a black man, having a, a, an atmosphere where you actually feel welcome and free to live. So I think there's ways to improve that. And me being an outsider, I just see where we can kind of um, tie up those loose ends, so to speak. Well, I got a question. Well, I, I, we're running out of time, but can, can you stay for one more segment? I feel like we, we haven't really oh, yeah. scratched this. Or we'll do one more segment. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, but, but my question is, is this, and we'll, uh, I don't know if you can give me about a minute answer on this, we're talking about police, the new search for the chief of police. What do you think that, uh, you know, where, where do you stand on the, on the new police search? Is it something that should, you know, be solely in the purview of the next mayor? Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, the mayor that is leaving now should not be given the responsibility of doing such. I believe the interim mayor, and Andy Hall, uh, is probably, probably a good stand-in. Mm -hmm. But again, um, given the opportunity of someone such as myself to be uh, elected mayor, I would definitely look outside of the police force to hire someone else. I was gonna, well, but I was gonna ask you that. Would you? Would you look within the police force? Would you? Would you do kind of a national search? Actually, I've been given um, contacted by uh, ex uh, sheriff deputies that are interested in the, you know, in the position. And becoming chief of police for the movie. chief of police in the event that I do get elected. I have close friends that I actually ran for uh, sheriff. Uh, out in Tahoe themselves that are libertarian. So mm -hmm. I have friends and uh, <laughs> people to consider. Well, I'll tell you, we've got to take a quick break. When we come back, Nicholas Wildstar, he's running to be your mayor right here in the city of Fresno. You're listening to the New Talk Radio 1680 KGED. More with Nicholas when we come right back. All right, perfect. All right. Yeah, I feel like that went really quickly, so we'll do, oh, yeah, we'll do, we'll do one more segment. That's how the world of uh, radio is, you know? That's good. It's, you know, you're like, 20 minutes goes by in 20 seconds, yeah. you know? So, thank you so much, man, for the good things. Yeah, good? You got it? Yeah. That's sweet. Hey, so I come back in. And, All right, uh, we got people tuning in. 37, right? 37. Perfect, yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. All right, uh, I'm going to ask you next about homelessness. All right. All right, homelessness is another, another big issue. Is there is the Libertarian Party big? Thanks, thanks for that. In Fresno? Oh, yeah. Really? We're the third. Uh, well, not in Fresno, unfortunately. The Libertarian Party here did kind of end up falling apart. Yeah. I'm actually the interim chair for the Libertarian Party. Ah, Fresno. okay. Uh, so, Fresno County, you know, I'm doing my best to kind of build things. You know about my love for the people. We got to get you with the. Uh, you talk with the Republican chair and the. Uh, and uh, they don't really like me, you know. Because, <laughs> again, it's big party politics and they don't like little party guys yeah so, uh, but the libertarians we're the third largest party in the country on a regular basis here in california we have over a nearly a million registered libertarians but the, the people involved in the libertarian party is another all sorts of jews and just plain israeli citizens that's what we're doing our best to improve people getting involved in the libertarian party oh hey you want to put you want to put headphones on or uh you sure yeah well just, 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 stay, just stay close to the, uh, to the mic. Yeah, you don't have to. Just stay close to the mic. You got the finest in travel yeah, okay, and learn much better in now. Israel. 559 877 2882 for the finest in travel and learning in Israel. Want a comfortable lifestyle? How you guys doing out there? Rick Edelman here. Join us for a special free live event AM that I just created called Generating Income in Retirement. 
There you go. All right. No, I was letting you guys know out there we're here at AM 1680 doing an interview with Guillermo Moreno. Yeah, Guillermo Moreno. All right. Guillermo Moreno. <laughs> 1680 AM, tune in. And uh, yeah, if you got any questions, absolutely. You know, call. Please do. You're welcome to call in right now. Are we live? We're live. We are live. We're live, yeah. So, yeah, you're live here. We're live here. So, yeah, we're live yeah, everywhere. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's about to get live in Fresno, y'all. So, be sure to tune in. All right, we got uh, 15 seconds. All right. <clears throat> Let me make sure I'm not dehydrated. to the Guillermo Moreno Show on the Valley's new talk leader, Talk Radio 1680 KGED. Nicholas Wildstar in studio. He's running to be the mayor of the city of Fresno. Second segment, we're going to be getting into some more topics and hopefully hit a lot more than just uh, one from the first segment. Yeah. Uh, big issue, uh, big issue, Nicholas, is the, the homelessness and the amount of homeless that we have in Fresno, how do we house the homeless? How do we ensure that they stay in stable housing? Well, I mean, I don't need to explain the issue. You, you, you've done panels. You, I'm sure you got. What's your housing plan oh, yeah, for the homeless? Well, I definitely feel like homes need to be built for them. So what I'm proposing is to build 3D printed homes. You can look it up on YouTube. 3D printed homes. 3D so like, printed homes. So the home will come out of a printer. <laughs> well, I know there's a there's a machine, yeah. you know, that uh, it has concrete in it, but you know, through and thanks to new 3D technology, you know, they basically just enter this. Ah, okay, you know what? I have. I, I have seen it. All, all right. I, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, I they got it, 3D printed guns. Yeah, yeah uh, that is. I know yeah, about that. They got 3D printed um, uh, body parts. Um, you know, aesthetics, if you lose in the arm or yeah. leg, um, or even organs. So 3D printing is definitely the wave of the future, and, and now it's being utilized in a way to where it can build in a complete home. So this one-bedroom, one-bathroom house can be built in less than 24 hours, costs less than $5,000. So with all of the money the city has been delegated, for instance, the $11 million the governor just granted us to, you know, help um, re, re, you know, give a reprieve uh, on the homelessness. The homelessness. Yeah, yeah. Um, we could definitely spend a, a, a small fraction of that on building these homes. So I'm offering to build a community of a hundred. You know, we have tons of land, underdeveloped land here in Fresno, buildings that have went, you know, um, closed. Uh, ex, um, you know, either they were senior facilities or mental health facilities that got closed down. We can reopen them to actually home you know how some of those people that are dealing with homelessness as well because what uh, yeah. would you uh i i it's i, I do remember seeing that i think it might have been like one o'clock in the morning and i'm just on facebook and i think i've seen yeah they they put the cement inside this this arm and it mm -hmm. pretty much just does like a little igloo exactly. type of thing i've seen it precisely so there's two kind of theories there's shelter first or getting the individual the help they need you know first as well there's two theories either put someone in a home or you figure out why they're homeless there's a lot of individuals that are addicted to drugs well yes of course and i think it's a, a matter of sending out qualified social workers and doing evaluations to find out those people that are in dire immediate need versus those that may have other issues whether it be drug abuse or drug addiction or mental health issues um, you do have families out there that unfortunately you know due to them missing a paycheck to paycheck uh, that type of living have, you know, um, ended up in a situation to where now they're either living out of their car or in a, a hotel or something, yeah. that's still considered homeless. Uh, uh, part of the homelessness population that we have here in the city, so that needs to be addressed. So not everyone that's on the street on the street actually is there because they want to be there or may be dealing with an issue. And um, the mental health issue definitely needs to be addressed. I think sending out mental health professionals like a task force would be a better way to address engaging with those individuals, especially if they have a crisis and someone happens to call emergency services for help. Um, that way, you know, they're getting the help that they need right there on the spot. 
um, and instead of sending out police. So, so would you house them first or try to figure out what their issue is first? A little bit of A, a little bit of B. Again, like you said, it depends on the individual and whatever their circumstance may be. So after that evaluation, if they, you know, are either a family with a small child or military veteran, you know, that just got discharged or whatever case may reason may be dealing with PTSD, not receiving, you know, assistance through the government, and now they're on the streets. Yeah. Uh, Would you require them to remain sober or to be drug tested to mm -hmm. remain in the shelters? Because I, and I said it on my show, I said, you know, you give someone, uh, you know, one, one of your 3D printed right. cement homes. Right. And I said, you know, what's going to end up happening, and not to your homes, but I said, if you give someone shelter <laughs> and you don't figure out why they're homeless first, they're going to go in there and they're going to continue right. doing the you know, the drugs. So would you have any requirements? Well, on? yeah, it's, a, it's going to be a transitory program. So, of course, there's going to be qualifying factors involved in that. And one of them is going to be getting a job, you know, because that house is going to only be available to that individual for a year. I don't think we should have government programs that go on um, year after year after yeah. year, or if not, sometimes with these welfare programs until the person becomes an adult. You know, there needs to be a sunset clause on a lot of these policies. And that's one thing I plan on doing as mayor is reviewing and repealing uh, a, a lot of the laws on the books. So uh, I'd also like to offer bounties to people out there of the community. If you if you see a bad law, uh, this is an idea. If you see a bad law and you experience a bad law, come to City Hall, tell us about it. And if we repeal that law, you get 15, 20 bucks, you know. So keep doing that over and over. <laughs> it's a way to get rid of the laws. There's tons of laws. We want to get rid of them all, right? You know what? That, <laughs> the that's, bad ones. You know, you'd be like, I guess, Dog the Bounty Hunter, right? Exactly. Go after bad laws. <laughs> okay. Right? You've got certain laws out there to, to tell homeowners they can't have a certain type of gate on their home. Yeah. yeah. It's an actual law. Yeah. You know, they say it's a penal code or regulation or whatever, but it's being enforced as if it's a law. So not all laws are right. You know, there were laws that said, you know, uh, people of color were, or, or certain people were property. You know, yeah, there were certain yeah, laws yeah. that said certain people couldn't get married. So uh, not all, every law is right. Um, and not everything illegal should be illegal. Yeah. You know, uh, for instance, with marijuana use. Let, let's get on to parks so that we're, we're running out of time here. Uh, parks was a big issue. Uh, obviously, you, you know, you, 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 you probably walked a lot of districts. You've probably gone to a lot of parks. Uh, what would your solution be for this entire parks? Uh, you know, we need more parks. We can't, we don't have enough parks. We can't maintain the parks that we have. Mm -hmm. Would you support a parks tax? Would you support a police tax? No, I'm against taxes altogether. I'm a libertarian. Come on now. Taxation is theft to us. Yeah. Know? I want to check you. I want to make sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. I want to make sure you and, check out. If we're taking your money, then something is wrong with that. We want you to voluntarily give. And that's how our government needs to start operating, is if you want better parks in your community, we should be building organizations to where people now can give money to actually have those be built. But, of course... But then, but, but then, like, like on the west, I live in the west side, mm -hmm. then you could have, I mean, I, I don't have any kids, I'm not going to give to... I'm going to give you the park that I'm not going to use. Right, use. and I do have kids, so I feel like, you know, all of my taxes should go towards the park in my neighborhood. Versus Wait, are are kids even playing in parks, though? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, parks, I bet. Uh, <laughs> well, think about it. Parks are multi-use. You got people that go there to play sports. You got people that go there to go for a jog or, you know, um, to meet new people. You know, my wife and I, would go there just to walk our newborn baby around. Mm -hmm. And even though he can't enjoy it himself... We're enjoying the fresh air, you know, being with our baby in the park. So yeah. uh, that's actually one of the things that my wife and I noticed when we moved here from Orange County was the lack of parks. And uh, one thing I would like to do as mayor is start building more parks. I think free enterprise would definitely be a way to have that done. For instance, if you have Barnes & Noble or maybe Starbucks that want to sponsor building a park, now they have an opportunity to be built without that money coming out of taxpayers' pockets. Yeah. What's your thought on uh, the general plan and uh, in, in Fresno's growth? Uh, you've, uh, you, if you've been downtown, you've seen a lot of, you know, there's a lot of vacant buildings. I live in downtown. We'll, we'll yeah. ask you about downtown revitalization and what can we do to get downtown going. But what, what are your thoughts on the general plan and how Fresno is going to develop? 
Absolutely. Well, I think a lot of it has been h highly ignored. Like you said, the town, the tower district, the downtown district. So I think um, making it more business friendly would allow it to be revitalized quicker. Uh, right now, there's a lot of government red tape and bureaucracy. Bureaucratic laws prevent development. And we need to recognize that. We know it, but we need to start putting in representatives that notice that and are making those policy changes versus saying, I need another two years, another four years to make it happen. There's term limits for a reason. Get in there and do the job. So immediately as mayor, once I get in there, I will be cutting all the red tape, getting rid of all of these uh, BS policies, you know, bull. Yeah, the yeah, bureau. Yeah, we got, we got. <laughs> and uh, uh, again, allowing businesses to come in, and be able to develop, be able to create jobs. Do you think um, we're business friendly? Do you think Fresno is business friendly? It is, and then it isn't, because again, with um, you have uh, again with the agricultural industry those uh, heavy relationships that have prevented more technological development. Uh, for instance, with the, what I'm offering is a high, uh, 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 basically a, a high speed rail. Yeah, what are your <laughs> thoughts on it? We'll get to the high speed rail next. It will actually be built. You know, yeah. a state of the art public transportation system, the people of Fresno do want that. And there's ways that it can be built. It's just, again, government red tape. So we get out of the way now. We have opportunities for a maglev train system, for a Hyperloop to actually be built here in the city. Uh, really, last question, and then I want you to plug your website and how people can get involved in your campaign. About 30 seconds, sure BRT, Bus Rapid Transit, what do you think? I mean, we've, we've spent a lot of money on it. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to continue. <laughs> it needs to stop. And uh, if we allow free enterprise to, again, create more opportunities, I think we the people would benefit from that. If we have multiple transit lines, now instead of you having just one choice, you have four or five or six, however many want to be created. Yeah. Uh, now you have more routes that are dependable and probably more affordable, you know? So competition creates more opportunities for we, the people, the consumer. And if we want our money to go far, we definitely got to, um, again, yeah. get more representatives like me in office. We got 20 seconds. Where can individuals get involved in your campaign website? Uh, that is wildstar2020.com. That's, again, wildstar2020.com, W-I-L-D-S-T-A-R, 2020.com. <laughs> Nicholas Wildstar, he's running to be your mayor right here in the city of Fresno. When we come back, we're going to talk about the State of the Union right here on the New Talk Radio, 1680 KGED. Nicholas, thank you for coming in. Oh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me. We think the Perfect. Thank you, man. Oh. Sorry, I kept looking at. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta make sure I stay on. Oh no, it's cool. No problem. Yeah, no, thanks, hey, man. it keeps me on top. Yeah. <laughs> Every little bit helps. Sweet, man. Yeah, that was wonderful. Hey, well, I'm happy to come back anytime. I don't know who's watching here, but. Hey, y'all, uh, I'm going to get out of here because I got more to do. <laughs> but till next time, I hope you enjoyed the show. Be sure to tune in with Guillermo, Guillermo, Guillermo Moreno. I got a lot of marbles in my mouth right now, but I'm going to drink some water. You guys be sure to tune in to the uh, radio station as well as in the video, okay? Till next time, long live liberty. Peace.